Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen, looking at item wear, snubcraft, docking, headlights and travelling while offline. This is a summary of Calling All Devs, Beard Degradation. It has some good infos in it. As a little side note to start with, oddly this week, CIG re-released on the RSI website a Squadron 42 monthly report that we actually had last month and I've already done a video on it, which I will link below if you're interested in that. I think it's because they had only previously released it via the newsletter email. Hopefully we should see a new monthly report for Squadron 42 or the Persistent Universe in the next week or so. So, calling all devs, beard degradation, item wear. There will be a way of repairing items with swapping out subcomponents using your repair tool, or I assume also having them serviced at stations. Wear will be shown on your ships on the, the MFDs as a cog, so you'll be able to literally see the individual wear in percentage that will tick up per component in your ship's cockpit. They are thinking of giving us a sort of like approximate running time left before a component is fully worn down in the same way on the Moby glass we have oxygen left when we're out in our suits. This would change based on your circumstances. Obviously if you're just finishing a dogfight or overclocking an item then it will look like the item's going to wear down much quicker but if you haven't been doing any fighting for a good long time it will show the, the component ticking down quite slowly. That percentage wear feature in the MFD's multifunction displays and cockpits is coming with 3.3. Merlin and Archimedes stuff so they are bringing the cockpit animations and materials all in line with their standards with those ships. This includes making sure that you have enough visibility when you're piloting them. The docking function of those ships is tied to um, some tech they're working on for docking, multi-grid physics tech, and then parasite docking for those ships. That's all needed to have parasite docking working. It's currently in the backlog. They want to get the hull C done and then have it docking to stations so that they literally have a ship to station docking done and then they're going to expand that to ship to ship docking. Headlights. So they are looking into ship headlights at the moment with more of a focus on gameplay uses now. This could take many forms. They talk about bright focused headlights compared to the wider area ones that we currently have. Performance is an issue as well with lighting. They want the lighting to look good and shadows to be sensible, but the scale and range of the game makes these quite simple things more of an issue, as having a light travel many kilometers might not be an efficient use of resources for someone's PC. In the short term, they want it to be effective for gameplay, those headlights, when you need them. They will be useful, basically. In the short term, they're going to increase the range of lights and give them a reasonable fall off. They are hoping for a more balanced quick pass for headlights for 3.3.5, but expect great things from them in the future. And I'm hoping eventually we will have different modes for headlights. Um, so different types of um, uses, so like wide beam, focused beam, all that sort of jazz. Traveling offline. So they have discussed in the past the potential of having players being able to travel to areas while offline. The current plan is to not let players do this though. They want players to make hands-on conscious decisions and be part of traveling and the choices they make. They want as little as possible remote gameplay that doesn't involve the player. Even when you're traveling, there's going to be risks, opportunities, things happening, events, moving your assets as well like a um, ship or whatever, cargo, when you're moving around the verse, that is a factor. Though you probably could pay other players to move your goods and ships around for you as well. Certain areas are going to be more risky to travel to and from as well. And they don't want to entirely remove the element of risk just by having people being able to go, well, I want to move here while I'm offline, bam, bam, I'll pay for that, done. Uh, you can hire people to take you from one point to another. Yep, that's going to be a thing. But there's always going to be risks, encounters, and things happening. In the future, they will look at long-distance travel again. They will always balance and push the game in a way that makes sense. And that's going to be based on player feedback as well. They are working on procedurally generating trains, stations, tracks, elevators, and their shafts at the moment for cities. So the system can place and handle these for new areas. And this does make me feel a lot happier when I think about these huge cities everywhere and um, like um, alien cities and just cities popping up on planets and that sort of stuff because 
if they're having that procedural system there, that means they don't want to have to place stations and things by hand, which means they're going to have quite a, uh, a lot of these around the verse. Well, at least that's what I think that means. At least that's what it's suggesting to me. Uh, what do you think of the more hands-on approach of gameplay in Star Citizen? Do you think there should be some more automation considered for certain areas like offline travel? please tell me in the comments below. If you don't have Star Citizen yet, be sure to create an account with the links below to receive 5,000 UEC, the in-game currency, as a bonus, and to participate in any free flight. Every month we have a ship giveaway for November. I am giving away a Saber Raven, Star Citizen game package, and a CitizenCon 2948 digital goodies pack. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details below. If you would like to further support the channel, the links to my Patreon and donations are down in the description below as well. If you are considering getting or upgrading your gaming PC for Star Citizen or any other game for that matter, instead consider the Shadow Cloud Gaming Service. It's a subscription-based service that leverages your internet connection to turn any appropriate device, whether it be an old PC, smartphone, tablet, and more into a powerful Windows 10 gaming PC. It's been working well in the latest 3.0. 3.0 PTU patch of Star Citizen. I'm going to try and maintain a best practices guide on my website as well. More information is available in the links below, and if you do decide to try it, use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the verse.